Hey Mosh fam, thanks for joining us today. I'm going to show you how to inoculate a grain jar uh, with liquid culture. Don't know if anyone's going to watch it, uh, but whoever's here, welcome and glad you joined us. Uh, the first thing I did today is started by turning off the central AC unit in my house. Uh, turn it off for 30 minutes, gives time for everything to settle down before starting the process. You don't want any contaminants floating around your work while you are um, doing it. So uh, I have a flow hood. I'm lucky enough to have that to work in front of. Don't really have to worry about a lot of contamination. Uh, still happens from time to time, but it's very rare. Uh, you don't have to do it in front of a flow hood. You can do it in front of a, you know, inside of a steel air box or um, even in your bathroom, uh, as long as you clean all the counters down and, and do like I said with the, the AC so everything has the time to settle. Um, it's about working you know quick, uh, smart, and being as clean as you can. Uh, I'm going to start by cleaning down the, uh, the surface here uh, with some 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol and just some basic paper towel. I'm just going to wipe everything down here. I've also had my full hood running for 30 minutes as well, which kind of cleans out the room uh, itself. So um, should have uh, pretty good luck today and not too much to worry about. Uh, we're gonna start with some of our uh, micro jars first, and then we're gonna do two of our standard size jars. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a jar here before I place it in the work area. I'm gonna give it a little spritz down. I'm gonna take a paper towel and just kind of wipe it down. Uh, I'm going to do three of these today, so I'm going to go ahead and just get them all ready uh, in front of the flow hood, cleaned up, ready to go, uh, so I don't have to go back and forth um, between, you know, bringing jars up to the work area and out of it. That as well will eliminate contamination risk. All right, so I got three jars here. I always like to have the injection port to the right of me because so I'm right-handed makes things a little bit easier. Um, and with the syringe, I'm gonna give the syringe a little spritz as well, wipe it down, make sure to get in there. You can't, you can't be too careful. I'm not sure how the audio is gonna pick up since I'm in front of a flow hood and I'm just using my phone at this point to take video. I don't have any any microphone, special microphone, anything like that, but hopefully it uh, turns out good enough. Um, if not, then you have the visual aspect of it. Um, these are the needle packages. I'm giving a little quick spray on them and wiping them down with my hand. Um, I'm gonna use the alcohol prep pads. Typically don't use these, but uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to uh, go ahead and use it so you can see how, when you're doing this yourself, how, how to use it. All right, so I'm gonna give my hands one more nice little spray here. Make sure nothing's on my gloves. Uh, I'm gonna get the liquid culture. I'm gonna shake it up real good. Sometimes it'll clump really hard, so you gotta get really into it. But this one's not too bad. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take this and take the cap off. I'm gonna work quick and smooth. And in here I'm gonna put two CZs in each one approximately. I'm gonna put that right in the middle, push it down, not moving around too much, just straight in. There we go, I'm gonna pull it out, cap it, and then put this cap back on for later use. I'm gonna do that with all three of these. Have to shake that one up. It should be okay. And I'm okay shaking these in here because I've already wiped them down with alcohol. Typically, you wouldn't want to do a lot of shaking and movement in front of your work area. If there is any uh, mold or bacteria or anything, it could shake it off onto your work area. But like I said, I've wiped everything down, so I feel pretty confident that it's not something that I have to worry about today.
And then what I like to do is I take the prep pad and I failed to do this because I'm just so used to it. But typically before I inject, I will wipe the port down with it. Um, sorry about that, but uh, hopefully the information is helpful, not the visual, but uh, so typically what I do is kind of wipe this down, put it to the side, inject it, and then put it back over the top. Just kind of give it time for that to uh, uh, seal up again because uh, the port is self-healing. I don't know if it takes two seconds or two minutes. I, I'm not sure. I'm not a scientist, but, um, you know, better be safe than sorry. All right, you wanna make sure, typically, I'm sure you're not gonna have three of these out. If you do, that's awesome. We appreciate your business even more so. Um, but you wanna make sure you don't get them mixed up. I don't have the labels ready for them yet, but I'm just gonna put them in the side with the syringe next to it so I know which is which. All right, and then uh, we're gonna do our standard size jars. Uh, spray it down a little bit. Then we're gonna wipe it down just to make sure that alcohol has a chance to get every every section of the jar to kill off any contamination that may be on them. Okay. You want to give it a second um, for that alcohol to evaporate off completely. Uh, when it evaporates, that helps kill off any bacteria with it, so you want to give it a chance to to do so. And the 70% is the, the recommended percentage to use um, because it doesn't evaporate immediately like 90% does. Uh, and then 50% is just too low. It's not going to kill everything that you need it to kill. Um, now that I remembered, we can go ahead and use the uh, alcohol prep pads like I would recommend you use them at home. Again, I'm getting my hands uh, sprayed down and wiped with alcohol to make sure to kill anything on it. Same with the syringe here. I'm gonna wipe that down. And my needle is hiding over here. And since I'm using the same strain uh, with these two jars, I'm gonna just use one needle. I'm gonna put it in, inject, and then put it into the other one. Um, I typically only do about three to four cc's for these jars, uh, but I'm just, I'm gonna go ahead and just do five. Uh, so I'm gonna use this whole syringe on, try to split it up evenly between the two. This one does have kind of a chunk in there, so I um, have let it set out a little too long, uh, but I'm gonna shake it up, and see if I can get it. It's never gonna be perfect, and because of that, then it's, one's probably gonna get more than the other one, but that's okay. Patience is something that we learn in this hobby. All right, so I'm gonna go for it. This is how we'd use the alcohol pad. Uh, you wanna put it on there, wipe it down a little bit, and then leave it on there until I inject. Wipe it down, leave it on there. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull this cap off. I'm just gonna go for it wash the plunger. That kind of took all of it, so I'm going to stop there and go to the next one. And then hopefully, I'm sure it got enough. Even if it only got one cc worth, it's enough. It just takes a little bit longer, so don't stress if that happens to you. Another few days won't hurt anybody. So now what I like to do is I like to mix up the jars very well. I like to uh, make sure that that liquid is not cooling in one area and get it all mixed out through the jar because if you get mycelium, you know, instead of, you know, going in one spot out, it takes a little bit longer if you have a little bit in every place kind of just growing together. Uh, in my experience, that's, that's typically the best. Uh, it's a little different with spores. You don't want to uh, spread out spores too much, too thin. 
because they need each other to uh, to uh, reproduce and and grow into mycelium. So you don't want to go this heavy mixing on spores, but with liquid culture, uh, in our experiences, has worked really well. Really want to make sure you get it good. You don't want any moisture sitting in uh, sitting in one area uh, that can you know slow down uh, any growth. So just mix it up really good. And I'm not going to bore you by mixing up the other ones in front of you. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to take these jars and put it in our incubation area. Uh, we'll try to keep it at about 78 degrees Fahrenheit consistently. Um, they don't need any airflow at this point. The filter patch will allow for a gas air exchange, um, so that'll that'll help the, uh, the mycelium grow, get you know exchange of oxygen and, and carbon dioxide. So I'll probably see growth, you know, a little bit of growth on this in about three days or so. I'm sorry about the camera rocking. Need to get a, a better mount. Um, anyways, about three days or so, I should see some growth and. Uh, typically once it starts it takes off so in about a week I'll probably be able to do a break and shake and then after the break and shake it'll probably uh, come back uh, within a few days and it'll be ready to use uh, you know uh, this is our first video so uh, hope it went okay hope it was uh, informative and uh, you know uh, keep checking out new videos we're gonna have uh, how to's on, on all of our products eventually so uh, any feedback, we, we welcome it. Let us know. Um, that's all. Thanks again for, for choosing Much Lovin'. Have a good day.